good afternoon. Welcome to the Strachan or Strom Family Convention. My name is Charles Burnett. I am Ross Herald of Arms Extraordinary and have been appointed by the Lord Lion King of Arms to be the supervising officer on this occasion. We are here, I am here, to hear your views, your recommendations for someone to be representative of the clan structure. That view that you hold, I will then report to the Lord Lion and he will decide whether to recognize that individual or not. You may wonder why a family convention. In Highland society in the past, if they had lost their chief or their leader, it became the custom for certain men of the group to come together in what was known as a derfin, a meeting. And they would decide amongst themselves who was the most suitable candidate to become the chief. Because the chief or the head of a house has responsibilities. And one must ensure that whoever is chosen will take these responsibilities seriously because he is the representative of a specific family group. In the Highland society, he was regarded almost as the father of his people so that if someone was in financial trouble, for example, the chief would be expected to put his hand in his pocket and help out. I'm not saying that that would be the modern way. <laughs> it is an indication of the responsibilities that the chief has. Now, may I introduce, although they probably need very little introduction, who is here sitting with me? On my left, we have Dennis Strong, who is the convener and co-founder of, to give it its full name, the Clan Strachan Heritage Society Incorporated, commonly known as the Clan Strachan Society. And on my right is James Strachan, co-founder and most importantly, treasurer <laughs> of the society. We also have with us this afternoon my fellow officer, the Honourable Adam Bruce, who's sitting quietly in the corner. He is Marchmont Herald of Arms, and he has with him Sir John McEwen, Baronet, because early next month, on the 6th of June, that, sorry, not next month, month after, they are going to have a McEwen family convention. Mm -hmm. So they're really here just to see how clansmen and clanswomen behave at a public gathering. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I think James has already asked for all mobiles to be switched off and we do have a photographer here so I'd ask that no one else for, at the moment takes any photographs. We would like to arrange for a group photograph at the end of this convention. Now I'm going to call first of all on Jim to say a few words uh, and then we will carry on with the convention thereafter. <coughs> I've been um, asked to give a, a brief history of how we got to this place uh, so far, so um, I'd like to start by uh, offering a general disclosure. As many of you know, there are two legitimate and proper pronunciations of the surname, uh, those being Strawn and Strachan, and I will use best efforts to make the correct uh, pronunciation in accordance with the individual's family tradition. However, as a Strachan, I'm somewhat pre-programmed. <laughs> so, um, as such, I beg your indulgence and understanding should I make a mistake. Uh, in 2005, Dennis and I created the Clan Strachan Society with the primary goal of bringing legitimacy and honor back to the name. For the first three years, we held a global survey over 300 respondents uh, uh, replied to the survey, and virtually all of those respond respondents supported uh, Major Ben Strawn, CMG, 
Mill of Strawn to be our next chief. I think most of you know this. Uh, in 2008, a, sub, uh, a proposal was submitted to the Court of the Lord Lion, and the then, the then sitting uh, Lord Lion King of Arms, Robin Blair, said that we had basically gone about it all wrong. Uh, he said uh, sufficient, we were lacking a sufficient number of Scottish armagers, and to our knowledge at that time, we really had none, or were unaware of any. Um, shortly thereafter, I filed my petition for arms, and then I helped Bill Strawn from New South Wales obtain his peti petition. And for two years, Bill and I were essentially the only Strachan armagers. In 2011, new guidelines were introduced by David Seller, and a letter was submitted, and it was confirmed that it was appropriate to, uh, for us to move forward with uh, ad hoc, uh, ad hoc or, or family convention. Dennis and I and our board of directors uh, again set a goal that we did not want whoever to merge as commander or chief for it to be a Dennis or Jim decision or a society decision, but it in fact had to be an entire clan or family decision. For that reason, for the, uh, it took almost two years to find the 25 qualified individuals that are sitting in this room and have been, who have been authorized to attend the family convention. We sent over 3,000 emails worldwide, sent 300 letters to various strackens in the white pages uh, that appeared to have land ownership. We uh, obviously advertise this in our newsletters and prominently on our website as well. One of the uh, requirements was that we uh, have a group that's geographically dispersed with strong representation in Scotland. Of the 25 people that were submitted, 11 were from the United Kingdom. Nine of those 11 are from Scotland. We have eight Americans, three Canadians, three Australians. So a good demographic. Also during this two year period, while attempting to identify Drafini candidates, a number of Strakens were granted arms. These included the Clan Strachan Society itself, Roddy Strachan of Benham, Martin Strawn from Queensland, Drew Strachan from Elgin, and Rob Strawn from the Mill of Strawn in Strawn uh, has a petition pending with the Court of the Lord of Lyon. Furthermore, with the help of Mrs. Rhodes, who's the Lyon clerk, we were able to meet uh, Sir Hugh, Professor Sir Hugh Strawn as well. So at the present time, we have seven armagers and eight, uh, one emerges uh, society. So we have eight uh, essentially people here uh, who have Scottish arms. Last year, 2013, we held a worldwide conference call. This conference call was again independently moderated by Mr. Michael Greer, who, who many of you will meet tonight. We had three candidates at the time and from a, the perspective of having to plan this thing, all three candidates were mutually supportive of, of, of each other and the will of the clan, which made things significantly easier from our part. These individuals were Rob or Charles Robert Lund Strawn from the Mill of Strawn, Professor Sir Hugh Strawn, Laird of Glenhighton, and Roddy Strachan, Baron of Benham. The call concluded with unanimous decision to support Rob Strawn, Mill of Strawn, as our, as our commander. Uh, I hope I speak for many of you uh, that there were several reasons why, people, why uh, uh, the clan merged uh, and why we all decided to support Rob. Rob was, uh, and his family are the only Strawns living in Strawns and again have a 50 acre, the Mill of, of Strawn. They have a multi-generational tie to the, to the mill, uh, with little to no chance of it ever going away, hopefully. Uh, Rob has a legitimate heir to his name and arms, being Luke, his uh, son, who's also very excited and very happy for the family. Rob has a strong vision for the future, and for nearly 50 years, his family has been welcoming Strachan visitors to the mill of Strawn thus demonstrating a, not just an individual, but a family commitment to a bond of kinship and highland hospitality. 
for those of us who know Rob, we, uh, we know that he's a friendly, welcoming, a humble guy. He's non-pretentious, the most non-pretentious person you'd ever want to meet. He's well-traveled, articulate, and he's just overall uh, a good guy. Probably uh, the last reason some of you may have selected to support Rob is because his father, Ben, years ago uh, obviously had, had broad clan support. Uh, unfortunately, Ben is not in good health. And uh, for this, you know, we're thankful for Rob for, for representing the family. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. That's been extremely helpful. Would anyone like to ask any questions concerning what has just you have just been told? The great thing about a family convention is that it is a public occasion whereby you can stand up and honestly give your opinion, which I will note. So if you think Dennis and Jim are doing a terrible job, <laughs> this is now the time to say it. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise um, if there are no comments, I may ask uh, Rob to say a few words to us. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not very used to this. Um, um, I'd actually told that um, I had to make a speech about half an hour before lunch. Uh, I thought it was going to field um, questions. Uh, so in a way, I, I, I'd almost rather do, do it that way um, by putting it to you, what, what do you think about Clan Strawn? And how do you think that we should take the clan forward? Does anybody have a thought on that? Now there's a challenge. Yeah. And do not hesitate. Uh, you're in amongst friends. No one's going to criticize you. Uh, the, the, the Rob is providing you with an opportunity. So please do let me know what you think and what you think should be the way forward for your particular family group. Rob, I've got a question. Um, sorry, would you be kind enough to tell sorry. me your name? Yes, Bruce Strachan. <coughs> Bruce Strachan. Yeah. I've got a question for you. Um, I noticed that the Clan Strachan had a presence at the Boyne Highland Games a couple of years ago. Yes. Do you intend, perhaps, to, as commander, do you intend to have a regular meeting perhaps at the Boyne Highland Games every few years, or then you have an Highland Games? Absolutely. Like that? Absolutely. Every year. Actually, um, Roddy, yep. uh, I think Roddy has been on the case, in fact. Yeah, I, I we can both answer the, this question. We were both at the Highland Games together That's this correct. year, and Roddy just pipped me to um, <laughs> speak to um, the Marquis of Huntley. Yeah. But, um, well, in actual fact, um, we've been in touch with the committee of the Aboyne Highland Games to see if they will allow us to, they have a tented village where different clans uh, have a, a tent where they can welcome people. Now, the, the latest that I have is that they were having a meeting and they would let us know whether they were going to allocate us a tent or not. I had hoped we would have known by now, but unfortunately yeah. we haven't heard back from that. Well, but um, we're certainly, I mean, I feel that that's something I think we should be doing as a family um, is, you know, putting our name on the map a little bit more mm -hmm. by being at these sort of events, and um, you know, so that people who are strackens that then wander around and, and see there's a clan stracking tent will start to get them more involved with this. Sorry, I didn't mean to take over. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, absolutely, I, I, I agree with that. Um, so I mean, no, I mean, my question, David Strachan here, um, would you look at that to Aboyne or maybe talk about the Lonach as well, where uh, I'm trying to represent the Strachans of Glen Kindy here, so, um, <laughs> you know, bringing, bringing it into to other parts, Donside for example as well? Well, my answer for that is I, I don't know. I, I know that at the Aboyne Games, they have what they call the Clan Village. <laughs> where you have a group of tents and you have the Fathersons and you, 
well, Leesks, who are good friends of ours, and other people like that. I don't know they have that at the Lonnie game as such. Uh, and unless you were putting together, you know, a group to take part in some yeah. event, it's m much, m my knowledge of it is, it's a much more event-led mm. games than, uh, there's a mixture of both at a boy. Mm. But y you're right, I mean, that, I don't mean that a boy's the only thing. Mm. Um, because of the, this year, 2014, there are lots of Scottish things going on. And again, that's a great opportunity to fly our flag. Um, and I, I think yeah. I'm correct in, in believing that the our two Strachan and strong gentlemen at the table have had representation at Highland Games in America, have yeah. you not? Yes. Um, I was doing it before I even met Jim, just to put the name out there. And uh, we were talking with Jim today, <clears throat> the Aboyne Games, <laughs> Um, would certainly be something that we would like to see uh, maybe in about three years so we give people a chance to save up uh, to come over and have a, 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 a full clan gathering of Strons and Strachans from throughout the world. Whereas basically we come in and just fill every inn in a boy in the surrounding <laughs> area. And um, uh, I've been doing, myself personally, I've been doing games on the west coast of the United States for years. Um, I will go anywhere from San Diego all the way up to Washington near the Canadian border and then over to Arizona and, and Nevada. In fact, I fly out tomorrow to Las Vegas to hook up with my wife who's doing the games in Las Vegas right now and then I'll drive home with her. But um, we're, we're extremely happy that the, the name has been up at a point and, and I agree with Dave is that we maybe look at doing the Lana games of which I've been to maybe even Braemar. Get up the get up the dia bit and get up to Braemar. So um, I think it's great that you, 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 that we get back out there. And as you said, Roddy, we we, we get the name back out. And um, like I said, I'd like to see maybe three years we we'll get a large glad gathering. We get a hundred people, maybe more, mm -hmm. and just uh, and just put it out. I think it'd be good. I should also point out. Yes, in Canada, last year we started one of the games in Ontario. Did he? I'm not mistaken, right? I don't think anyone can hear a word you're saying, okay. Jim. <laughs> so, to do, do let, any comment should be public. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, speak up. <laughs> now, this is, may I introduce Floyd Strachan from uh, near uh, Toronto in Canada. Yes. And near Ottawa, sorry. Strong from near Ottawa. Uh, <laughs> Last year we started going to Howling Games. We went to two Howling Games in Ontario last year. I would have a, a comment on our on our clan. Obviously, at this stage, it's it's incipient. Uh, none of us have real clarity as to what it can become. But I would encourage Rob to create a committee around him, uh, particularly of of Scots that are close to you. Yeah. that can advise you and support you. Certainly Hugh and Roddy would be a good start. Yeah. And uh, others who, uh, who may be here or may not be here, but who can help you walk through the process of, mm -hmm. of creating a plan. Yes. It, would be, it would be a challenge. In, uh, if I may, to sure. George Strachan George. from outside of Philadelphia in the United States. We've been talking about outreach and expanding the clan name, but I would also encourage you not that we haven't had this conversation, but um, you, you know, having a, a place for Strackens or Strons uh, to come to the mill, and you you lovingly accepted me and, and my family and, and others around us, and obviously I need not, but obviously I encourage you to uh, continue to do that moving forward mm -hmm. and you know extending the Highland hospitality. Mm -hmm. That you extended to me to others in our class. Yeah, thank you for that. Too. Thank you for your hospitality. Yes, I get the impression that one might have to take a little care how you go about things because at the moment the clan idea is being driven from across the Atlantic. But these two gentlemen have ensured that it will have a strong Scottish base. So if you're asking the proposed candidate for as I say, representative or commander, 
uh, and asking him to have a committee to help him, then whatever kind of organisation is arranged in Scotland, you've really got to work out a communication system so that you're working together hand in glove. Otherwise, you know, that's, you know what clan politics <laughs> are a minefield. That's a minefield. And it causes so much distress. And you have to be very careful to keep control of the organization once you have it created. And uh, I'm sure all here will be anxious to give every support they can to the proposed candidate. Are there any other points that you would like to make, Rob, or anyone else in the room? I mean, there's the most obvious question that I'd like to ask everybody, and that is really why they want a chief or a commander of, of their clan. It, it's something that I think I know what I think, but I would like to know what everybody else thinks here. What's the obvious, what's the obvious reason for why you want to have Clan well, first of all, you. I'm John Strachan from John's Denver, Colorado. Um, I think, uh, for my own doubt, my own. I'm sorry, I've been there, and sometimes I speak Norwegian. Uh, but uh, um, for my part, uh, I am fulfilling something that my grandmother and my grandfather uh, were very interested in, and in being mm -hmm. again part of the Scottish heritage that they were. Um, born into and brought up in. Uh, this is kind of closing a circle and making it possible for us to, to have a, f a hold point in Scotland that, that we can point to our children and say, you know, this is now a clan. You are a clan mem member if you wish. Um, this is the person who is our commander and hopefully will be our chieftain in a number of years and that if you are traveling and you are interested in your family roots, which we, we all become sooner or later, even though we travel distances. I, I lived in Norway 20 plus years and then back to, back to the United States, but I was always interested in finding out where I came from. Uh, and I think it's, it's very important to have that whole point in Scotland with uh, Robbie and the mill at Strong and being able to say, this is where my great-great-grandfather immigrated from, and, and from a small croft in the area somewhere in the valley, I don't know exactly where, but being able to say that and, and say, if you really want to find out your roots, here's where you can go to find them. I think having that whole point is one of the most important things to have with a commander, a living represent re representation of that. And uh, I, I think that's, for, for, as I said, for my part, I think that's very, very important. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you had a question. Can you tell me your John name? John Stewart Strachan. I think about John Stewart. John Stewart. Thank you. From Glasgow. Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> well, being born and bred in Scotland, uh, I think the kind of answer that you're really looking for is to put in, to enable a structure a fellow clansman here to support you, but also to establish an identity that we have. You really have to have a structure and an identity mm -hmm. to push forward, to put the name forward for the Strachan clan. How do you feel that uh, in your life that identity, uh, do, you, do you feel, think that it's been, it's been enhanced by, by this? Or? Very much so. Um, People who they, they go out. I, I've travelled extensively over all over Scotland uh, to the islands and uh, um, all over. I'm always interested in uh, why nobody knows who the Strachan clan is. Yeah. So we really need to be getting that name out. Mm -hmm. by all of the clans persons here, yeah. for wherever they go, for they spread the name of the Strachan clan. Thank you. Now, we do have Skype here. There are people abroad who are interested in this uh, proceedings this afternoon. They may have uh, points they wish to make to the floor. 
I am not sure if we are actually in contact with them or not. But the opportunity was given. I'm afraid the technology has let us down, <laughs> Marchmont, so you'll, you'll, have to, you'll have to watch in, in June. But thank you very much, uh, Rob, for coming forward and posing questions to them. <laughs> Sorry, I just one, oh, the, sorry, just a, a minor point. one of the reasons I think we should have a, a one commander is I think historically, you know, the, the, the family's been dispersed, you know, through the different houses, whether that's going Kindy, Thornton, Monboro, or whatever, for years and years and years. And those those areas have grown up with their own strata, you know, identity well, identity which has then become diluted. And I think what one one thing I can see in having a new commander is actually bringing those houses back together, almost. Uh, so we're going back, you know, 400 years and bringing them all back together, and then actually reclaiming my identity, which, is, which has been lost. That's, that's, that's from my sort of very naive, I'm afraid, historical perspective. That's what I feel. It appears, Rob, that I'm getting a very strong feeling from this meeting that you are the preferred candidate. And you can now begin to see some of the tasks that are going to be ahead of you. Uh, getting groups together, uh, binding perhaps up old wounds and uh, healing uh, old problems. But uh, certainly, I think one of your, your tasks will be this business of keeping Scotland and America closely working together. Um, I had lunch with these gentlemen yesterday and I was telling them the story. I was in Oklahoma at the Highland Games a few years ago and was told about this ancient Scottish tradition. <laughs> What's that? It's called huddling the haggis. I said, oh yes. <laughs> and he said, this was, came about because wives would be going out onto the hills where their husband was perhaps uh, planting, plowing, looking after sheep and there would be a stream in between her and the husband. So she had to throw his lunch to him. <laughs> she did this by tucking the haggis in a piece of string, and it had to be uh, <laughs> moved like this between her legs, and then she would throw it across the stream to her husband. <laughs> and this was performed at the Highland Games, and so I had to say, oh, I'm afraid I've never come <laughs> But it was an American thing, you know, as just as uh, uh, Tartan, Kirkling the Tartan was a, a, a Scottish minister, albeit, in New York, who said, well, my church attendance is down during September. Mm -hmm. What can I do? And he said, oh, well, well Kirk the Tartan. And he started a tradition which is original and it's American and it's a good tradition. So some of these traditions could come back over to Scotland too, but we must be a little cheery of some of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, are there any other points anyone would like to raise? The meeting has gone extremely smoothly. There have been no tears, no blood on the carpet. 